Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. So, today uh, we are at lecture number 22 and this lecture is comprised of uh, the different kind of arches, arch structures, their uses in the building as well as different you know bridges. So, previous like uh, before we start this discussion on the arch that we have seen in the frame structure the advantage of creating the span and uh, the load transfer from beam to column and the foundation. The advantage of using arch is something where uh, the arch itself, the profile, the curvature itself is taking the load and most uh, commonly it is taking the compression, the compressive load. So, there will be not essentially uh, the tension uh, developed uh, and if it is tight then uh, definitely there will be some. But Otherwise, this is being used and uh, it, this arch form being used for so long from the history like we have seen many such examples uh, from bridges, from different buildings, even to create some small opening like window, door, arch form being used uh, like in a, you know, in a bigger manner and this lecture will uh, be focusing on that. So, let us start this particular discussion on arch. So, coming to the definition, uh, there is no such distinct definition. So, discuss what exactly the arch, an arch is a curved structural form that carries load around an opening, transferring the load, all the load through their profile. It is not giving like uh, with the connection. So, this curvature itself is transferring the load uh, of the profile of the arch to the abutment, the support or the jams or the pyres. So, basically uh, if we have this particular uh, support, the pyres, the arch is basically transferring load and most commonly it is very symmetric. So, that is why the load, the homogeneity of the material and the geometry is helping this arch to transfer the load like this. Again the arch are the self supporting compressive structures as I mentioned already in arch mostly will have the compression stabilized by the force of gravity acting on their weight which makes them very stable and efficient capable of larger span and greater load. So, what exactly it is like the arch form that we can create like we just uh, start with uh, the example of a uh, chain. So, suppose we uh, have uh, a chain and just uh, it is having a length more than that. So, we just allow the chain to have uh, you know sag. So, it will uh, give you a particular form. We will discuss that the, this catenary form or the parabolic form and then it is having the flexibility when you add some uh, weight to it. So, it will change the form little bit then you can balance it and if you reverse this, uh, so that will create the arch. So, normally it is uh, with a chain or cable and now converting to the arch form. So, it is uh, geometry, the geometry we follow to create this arch will determine how it will transfer the load and this is very effective uh, form of a structural element that can be used. The downward load of an arch must be transferred to its foundation. How it will transfer that we will have uh, this distribution both the side ok gradually we will uh, also discuss uh, with the like the components of arch and to the support and that support will transfer it to the foundation. The outward thrust uh, exerted by an arch at its base must be restrained either by its own weight or the weight supporting of the walls. So, both the cases like uh, it may be like full arch or it may be something where the support to be uh, there or else sometimes with the buttress. 
So, uh, in uh, some of the uh, historic building we have seen the arch form and other thing is supported by the wall and in order to reduce the wall, so we use the flying buttresses to that. The outward thrust increases as the height or rise of an arch decreases. So, what exactly it is the rise is basically uh, this particular height like if it is a flat beam column structure and then we try to give the bend. So, if you uh, reduce it then thrust will be more. So, if you make your uh, arch like parabolic it will be the great one, if you make it flatten, flatten, flatten. So, it will give the outward thrust more compared to the height. So, that is why it says that thrust increases uh, uh, as the height or rise of this decreases. Now, coming to uh, this particular uh, schematic where uh, you have different components. So, at uh, the curvature you have the internal curvature called intra dose, the extra dose is the outer curvature. Then you have this abutment or area where like it is being supported to the piers and the rise as I mentioned it is uh, basically the distance between uh, your uh, internal curvature uh, from that particular horizontal line. So, where it is being supported and then you have different kind of uh, elements. So, mostly like in history, so this arch were formed to due to the uh, with the brick machinery or stone machinery and then you have a crown at the top and also some uh, you use this particular uh, stone uh, we also refer as the keystone. So, this is basically the keystone and this area is basically your crown and this is your haunch then in between uh, the layers of the components are also called hoiser. So, and this is the effective span. So, this kind of structure mostly being used to create the opening sometimes even in the window and depending on the rise we will have different kind of arches, we will be discussing that as well. So, how load is transfer? So, load imposed on it will be transfer symmetrically uh, and that will transfer to the ground. Sometimes uh, if your wall is not capable to do it, so we can also use some flying buttresses or some other support which will eventually distribute the load and this symmetry is very important uh, in order to do that. So, here also this is the sim, uh, similar thing, so in a 3D form, so you can see the how the bonding being made. So, in this case this is basically your rise. Now, coming to the material uh, that uh, can be used. So, any material can be used, but normally the material uh, used in uh, the history or in the recent times the big masonry, the stone masonry, sometimes the wood being used is very uh, uh, not that much easy to curve the wood. So, like uh, different seasoning is word or make into pieces the batten how you form this particular arch. The concrete arch is uh, also possible with the proper reinforcement um, and all and then steel arch is being prefabricated and can easily be made as per the requirement. Now, uh, let us go through some of the beautiful arches. So, some uh, this is very natural arches that being formed uh, that due to some you know air flow and all this being created. So, it is uh, you can see that how it is being sustained and this is something where mostly arch being used uh, for uh, making the bridges like uh, maybe it is small or maybe large, uh, but big machinery was used to create this arch which will help to distribute the load uh, effectively. So, this is being used earlier. Okay, and then the revised form of this like where in this picture you can see those areas are filled with masses uh, to you know support it more. So, in that uh, comparison, so here you can see that vertical members they are tied up with this particular arch where the concrete being used, here the big machinery being used or the stone machinery being used and in this case it is the concrete arches. 
Now coming to the two examples, the two famous uh, places like one from the Mumbai and Delhi, the India Gate and Gateway of India, there also it is not um, acting like uh, uh, the support to the bridge or something, but here it is uh, just representing the doorway. So, this is also very uh, attractive. So, here you can see that how it being formed in both the cases and looking into these two pictures, you can identify the geometry of the arch. In this case, it is more semicircular, but in this case it is not it is something different. So, they are, they are creating a point. So, it is point edges at the same time like if you take uh, this. So, uh, this particular arch is. So, it is uh, coming to the equilateral arch that we will discuss and then different ornamentation, different type of other arches, segmental arches we will discuss in that. Now, the type of arches based on the geometry. So, there are uh, like uh, quite a number of different types that are being used, but most commonly the way we can classify the arch uh, is something like the triangular arch, the round arch, segmental arch, lessened arch, equilateral arch, camber, then uh, trefoil, then horseshoe, three center, four center, you can even increase the five centered, six centered arches, then the augie arch, then one of the important uh, one is uh, your parabolic and uh, catenary arches. So, this is basically where again I uh, am referring the example that you just take a chain and just let it uh, like uh, sag due to its weight. So, you will get some shape like this is the best possible way and if you add some uh, 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 load to it, so it will readjust and try to give the shame. So, this catenary form is very useful and when you reverse it uh, with the material, so that will give you the arch. So, this is your uh, what we call is your catenary curve and this is your catenary arches. So, normally when uh, uh, this particular is free uh, only uh, carrying the self weight and all we refer at the catenary, but when uh, that is being uh, taking some weight of a deck or something, then uh, we just call it the shape is uh, changing little bit, uh, it will be parabolic then, then the parabolic arch will form. So, let us see some of the examples. So, the triangular, it is very simple form where two members just uh, being supported like this, where it can be a combination of brick or sometimes earlier even this arch was formed with a single stone. So, two stone keep uh, putting together in this alignment which give this particular form. So, this door, uh, that particular doorway, the opening is formed with this. And if you see it carefully, so this is basically, uh, you know, rumble work of uh, the stone masonry uh, with uh, lime concrete. So, that is being created um, and again the symmetry to be main, uh, maintained, so that the load will be distributed uniformly. So, this is the triangular type. Then coming to the round type, it is basically uh, the form of this arch is giving or um, giving you a completeness of the circle. So, here in this case you can see, you can compare it. Uh, this is basically a um, semicircular thing where uh, the center is been fixed at this particular, you know, bisection of this uh, particular horizontal line. And this radius is being rotated. So, this is giving a round form and many a times like it is giving the symmetry. So, what we discussed uh, in the example of India gate where we found this kind of round arch. So, that arch is being formed like this and here also if you see the distribution the number of bricks, the machinery layout it will be uh, having the symmetry. So, again uh, this is uh, your center. So, then this will be your rise and it is giving a form of a round. Now, coming to the segmental arch, it is basically when you have a semicircular arch and then you try to uh, put pressure. So, you just try to make it a uh, little bit the uh, you know rise of the arch uh, being reduced uh, both the size. So, you just squeeze it. Uh, and then it will create the segment. So, in this case basically what you can see that uh, it is the center of this arch is 
now not at this uh, it is shifting somewards uh, like if you complete it so it will shift it from that particular line so the segmented arch being also used as because like it will uh, essentially it will uh, you know uh, decrease the rise of the arch and wherever you require this so in this case also if you see that it is not exactly the semicircular this is the segmented arch being formed in this uh, particular bridge now coming to the lessened arch or it is also the pointed arch system uh, where uh, again like uh, it is something not giving your uh, you know single center so this particular form that being created so, that will have center somewhere here and then it will have center like this and so it is basically a pointed arch and being used uh, normally in if you see the Byzantine and the post Gothic architecture then uh, this kind of arches being used uh, most commonly. Then coming to the equilateral that we also found in the uh, you know your gateway of uh, India in Mumbai. So, where the arch is formed it is similar to uh, uh, the one like the lancet, lancet and but here it is something where uh, like the span wherever the both ends are considered to be the center of the arch uh, and then that will be forming this particular um, structure. So, in this case also if you find so basically uh, if you just make the circle so this is uh, basically creating the equilateral triangle uh, and then uh, this arch form is called uh, your equilateral arches that you can see here uh, this example of uh, the charge and mostly like those kind of uh, arches being used in the Roman, Byzantine and then not the Roman, the Byzantine and Gothic architecture. Coming to the uh, you know camber or the flat arch. So, uh, most commonly in uh, the area like in Germany and also this kind of uh, architectural treatment uh, been seen where uh, like normally the you know the linten part of a window or something where this kind of flat arch being used to decorate it. Sometimes they can go with the similar material to give the structure uh, the similar look or sometimes they can make a variation with the brick texture or the color to have it. So, this is the flat arch. Now, coming to that the trefoil arch is uh, similar to uh, like uh, what we can see the leaf uh, the foil um, of a tree. So, where it will form uh, like this kind of you know uh, structure. So, uh, three circles like they have been uh, using. So, where the symmetry to be maintained. So, in this case also like if you see like they are maintaining uh, this particular uh, geometry to create this. So, this is also some ornamentation to the art uh, arch form uh, that was used. Uh, now, coming to the horse so, so in this case horseshoe uh, is basically uh, the profile that we have this kind of magnetic uh, like the horse magnet horseshoe arch where this being formed uh, like this. So, uh, this is again uh, very useful and many uh, many examples that we can get uh, from this. The formation is same. So, this is a schematic where it will look like this. Then C, uh, three centered arch is something where uh, you can uh, get something like where it is not basically the three foil uh, kind of, but here it is where you have the arch form. So, here you have a circle, then you have circle here. So, two points and then uh, basically what you have your connection uh, like uh, with the same perpendicular line and you have a bigger circle. So, in this case uh, the arch is controlled by three points and then that is why it is called three centered arch and here you can see the example of this. So, where the three centered arch when you go uh, like you know deeper and deeper your upper portion of the arch will be flatter and all. So, if sometimes you require this kind of uh, you know arrangement of arch you can go with that 
where here also you can get this. So, this is a very bigger circle uh, with uh, center at the bottom. Now, four centered arch is something where uh, like it is something again you can control it where you can go for a pin joint uh, and you can create it. So, here you can see with this uh, center we can have the circle in these two position and then controlling this you can have a bigger one like this and you can have a bigger one like this. So, controlling it like how you if you increase the number of uh, you know points then you can create different geometry. So, this being used to the four center arch in again the charge mostly in charges or this place is uh, this being used. Now, the Augi arch is looking something where like not at the same direction the arch is formed in the other direction and give some you know uh, dynamic form. So, this is the Augi arch being used. Now, coming to the parabolic and uh, um, catenary arches, so that we already discussed that if you compare with this chain and all, this is just the reverse of that will give you this catenary form. So, this is one example that is made with the masonry. Now, uh, you can see this is uh, again um, like this is the great arch, uh, where there also you can use, uh, you can see the machinery here, it is something where made of some different material. So, this huge structure is self supporting and uh, really creating something um, interesting space over there. Now, coming to the support, in this support what uh, we can have that hinge ledge arch where it is being just fixed then you have the two hinge arch and these uh, references, these particular examples are related to the bridges because it is being used so uh, uh, you know um, bigger manner in uh, creating those bridges that we have seen in some of the examples that the segmental arch or maybe sometimes it is uh, your uh, lancet arch or something. So, then you have three hinge arch and then tied arch. So, looking at the schematic here you cannot see some uh, the hinge joint or something, it is also referred as a pin joint. So, in the frame structure we discussed the fixed joint and the hinge joint here also it is the same. Now, coming to the hinge lace arch where this arch is formed and it is just fixed, uh, uh, fixed to the ground. So, it is fixed with the ground and by which it is transferring the load again symmetry to be maintained uh, that is uh, there in the hinge ledge arch. Now, coming to the two hinge where two hinge is being provided the two support if you really uh, go through it. So, at this end so that being supported with hinge. Um, so, then compared to fix this is the two hinge joint and being supported. Now, coming to the three hinge joint along with uh, the um, two hinge uh, at the support both the end. So, one hinge is also provided. So, basically it is giving uh, the joint like this. So, it is uh, the application of three hinge joint and this is just to create a bridge to create the overpass uh, on a particular uh, expressway. And now, coming to the fourth category that is the tied arch where along with this uh, support you also tie this particular uh, member to the bridge. So, in this case you know though this will the compress because of the tide. So, tension will be developed at this portion. The earlier case if it is not tight. So, it is full of compression giving support to the you know the bottom of uh, uh, your arch that will transfer to the ground. Now, coming to the summary. So, arch is having advantage uh, because it is basically uh, depending on the geometry of the arch, it is uh, distributing load through its curvature to the support the pias or and finally, it will go to foundation and the advantage that with arch you can create the large span and there is a relation if you uh, you know decrease the rise of the arch that means, the lateral the outward thrust will increase. So, uh, in, in that case we can say that compared to a beam and column. Uh, so, 
uh, the arch is a better form which can actually reduce some horizontal load. So, this is uh, something where you can um, actually experiment with taking two books and you just make this alignment of the books like this, okay. then it will be more stable. Now, you just uh, lower the uh, rise of that and you just make it little flat. So, what you will feel that it will have a you know increasing the horizontal force and if you make it even flat, it will collapse. So, this is uh, the very basic example where you can uh, experiment with. So, uh, depending on the rise, increase in thrust, the you know outward thrust will increase if you decrease, if you lower down the rise of this. So, uh, like in the, uh, this is something where like you can uh, understand that uh, with change in rise, how uh, like the arch uh, outward thrust will improve, the horizontal force will add it to that and that is why the best uh, solution to it is to just go with this uh, parabolic form and all. And some of the buildings, even uh, the buildings uh, designed by Antonio Gaudi and all, they have uh, like used uh, those architects, they have used this particular form. Now, uh, in the second part of the presentation, what we discussed is basically the support condition of the arch bridges. So, we first discussed uh, about the no hinge uh, bridges where like uh, this particular arch form is being just supported with a fixed end. Uh, just you know across the river or some locations and in the two hinge system those being supported with the pin joint or the hinge joint and compared to that like when uh, we have uh, again a pin in between. So, it is converted to your three pin joint and also we discussed that um, not only this joint along with that we also have some examples, some bridges where uh, this arch is tied with a horizontal uh, member. So, uh, depending on the support and depending on the situations, we can really go and we have seen uh, a very good uh, number of examples where the arch being used so nicely that overall aesthetics of the bridge or the structure is really appreciable. So, the advantage of arch that what we discussed that we can go for the higher span, uh, but uh, the limitation to the arch is whenever you use this arch uh, form. So, definitely the top portion of uh, that arch uh, is basically where you have to compromise with the space. So, whenever any structure like you know you have some you know hanger or something where you just repeat this arch form of the frame and then you just cover with the light material, but you cannot use this particular volume uh, um, with uh, the very regular structure. So, then you have to make some arrangement and then you can support it uh, um, with something. So, the bridges you have seen that sometimes you just use some tension members to create this or sometimes even uh, like you just feel this portion that we have seen that brick machinery and that earlier that we can feel this portion to support uh, the structure above, uh, on top of it. So, uh, like that here we conclude the advantage of arches and the material that can be used. Sometimes we can have this you know arch form uh, the frame for the window or door which is made of wood that can be done or with the steel that is very possible or else sometimes also we have seen the catenary arch that here the huge uh, catenary arch being formed uh, with some material like the concrete and steel. So, uh, there is no such a constraint with the material that can be, but this has advantage over uh, like your simple beam column structure, but proper uh, geometry to be maintained the you know shuttering of the arch is very crucial where uh, in frame structure it will be very easy to uh, support it, but for this you have to support it uh, with uh, proper care. The centering of the arch, the shuttering, the temporary structure to be built to make the arch form and the symmetry to be mentioned maintained is very critical, otherwise it will give more advantage in the structural form. So, here I conclude uh, and you can go through uh, many examples and I advise you this, you just go through different kind of you know support joint arches 
are being used in that you make a comprehensive list and we can discuss over it uh, and enhance the example list of each of this type. So, these are the further reading uh, that you can go through and also you can go through those you know website link given in uh, the respective slides. So, with that I uh, end up uh, this lecture here. The next we will be discussing with the vault uh, which is also derived uh, like from the arch basic form uh, in, the, in the upcoming lecture. So, um, thank you for taking uh, part in this particular course and uh, we will be again meeting on lecture number 23 that is the vault structure. Thank you.